Now let's move from ice to water with our next speaker. Mm. All right, Peter Wardham is a professor of ocean and physics at the University of Cambridge. And uh, Peter, are you with us? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very warm welcome. Um, is it also correct to say that you're one of, of the experts on, on the polar seas? Uh, yes, I've worked my whole life in, in, on the polar oceans, especially the Arctic Ocean. Uh, you've done some 40 or 50 expeditions there, is, isn't that so? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a couple of years over in the Arctic. Uh, in recent weeks, we said that there has been some reports about serious threats to the climate in northern Europe. Uh, there's been talk about the Gulf Stream seems to slow down. And can, can you say something about that? Um, well, uh, I don't think it's true that Gulf Stream is slowing down, but there are changes going on in, in the circulation mm. of the Arctic Ocean uh, and the circulation of the Atlantic Ocean. And one of them is that the the uh, um, the Atlantic thermohaline circulation, which is a very very slow circulation driven by temperatures and salinities in 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 the ocean, has slowed down. And the one of the reasons is that the that the place in the Arctic where a lot of the sinking of the water takes place to maintain a kind of a uh, a global conveyor belt has stopped being able. To operate because there's no longer any convection going on in that region. And the predictions from that are that um, by the end of the century, uh, there will be uh, less warming in the, the fringe regions of Europe, Western Europe, uh, Ireland, um, Britain, Iceland, uh, and the, the, the Atlantic coasts of France. And that's because there's, there will be less uh, heat being transported up to, towards Europe by the, the currents coming from the tropical Atlantic. Um, one of those is the Gulf Stream, which is wind-driven, and that, that will keep going. But the Atlantic thermohaline circulation uh, is slowing down because of this lack of convection. And the result of that will be that um, we're the predictions of a business as usual scenario are that that most of Europe will ex experience about four degrees of warming by the end of the century, which is pretty disastrous. Uh, it will turn a lot of southern Europe into something resembling the Sahara. But uh, Western Europe will only experience about two degrees of warming, and uh, that will put, be quite nice for Britain and Ireland. However, that's ex experienced at the cost of much more warming in the tropical Atlantic, so that we can expect to see the uh, a, a, a slower warming in Europe balanced by far more rapid warming of the surface waters of the uh, of the Atlantic and the tropical Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, which will be giving us more intense hurricanes. So you'll be getting very, very serious increase in the intensity of of, of hurricanes in the uh, in the southern states of the US, uh, while we'll be experiencing some more moderate warming in in Western Europe. But that, that's just one of the effects of uh, and that, that effect comes from the fact that because of the lack of sea ice production in the Greenland Sea, we're not getting the amount of, uh, of dense water being produced that we used to get. Um, if I can go on and talk about um, sea ice, um, I would differ a little bit from the previous speaker and say that it's not at all easy to see how sea ice uh, loss can be reversed. It, it's not it's not as simple as has been uh, uh, made out. I think it, it's it's quite a it's going to be a quite difficult process to see how sea ice can be brought back, um, and the the consequences of sea ice retreat are, are quite serious right across the spectrum of what happens to the world. Um, the, firstly, the 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 retreat of uh, of ice or loss of ice from the Greenland ice sheet is partly due to the fact that uh, in warmer, a warmer summer climate in the Arctic with warmer uh, air because of lack of sea ice, there'll be greater amount of loss of, of water from, from the Greenland ice sheet surface, which will be giving us a, a, an accelerated sea level rise. So that's on top of the, uh, the, the extra factors that, that um, 
the previous speaker described, which are the the, uh, the these extra horrors we can expect from the Antarctic ice sheet yeah. breaking up but to some extent. Instead, we're, we're going on top of that, we're going to have this steadily increasing rate of loss from the Greenland ice sheet. Yeah. So sea level rise will continue to accelerate and we don't see any way that is going to be easily reversed or slowed down. Uh, and then we will be also having losses um, in other ways from sea ice retreat. One of them is the possible threat of a uh, Russian Arctic, where the, at the moment there's a lot of methane in, in the sediments, in methane hydrates, which is held back from being released by the fact that there is a permafrost layer on the seabed which is, is busy melting at the moment because of the, again, the loss of summer sea ice. So what, do so you see, what, what kind of future do you see here? First, I need to ask you, when it comes to the Gulf Stream, are there any differences uh, depending on the season? Uh, I mean, you say it's, it's not going to get as warm as otherwise predicted if the Gulf Stream slows down a bit, but are there any differences during summertime versus wintertime, for instance? We've had a, quite a hard winter have, here in, in Scandinavia for the last two months, and then it pops up and it's almost summer temperature here. Uh, well, I think that's a different, that's a different mechanism. Um, that's really this uh, extreme weather yeah. event we mentioned before, uh, which is that the, as the, the temperature difference between the Arctic and the tropics uh, gets reduced, the Arctic is in the tropics, we find that the, the jet stream, which is the, the, the air mass se separating these two uh, atmospheric uh, types, the, the polar air mass and the, and the more tropical air mass, mm. that slows down. So that the jet stream is slowing down and it's slowing down moves into very lobes, and these large lobes give us slowly moving um, anomalies of warm and cold temperatures. They've right. been having these in the United States for 10 years, but we've had about the first one in Europe this year, which has been an extremely cold air mass yep. in, in middle Europe and an extremely warm air mass in the Arctic itself. The Arctic Ocean has, warm, has, has been experiencing really anomalously warm air temperatures yeah. so that, that's that's an atmospheric effect i think that but the the uh, whereas the the change in the circulation of the atlantic is of course an oceanographic effect right 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 but we're we can see already at, at the warming a global warming of one degree we are affecting global weather patterns around the world and it's uh, and we're heading into the future with a further warning up top on that thank you very much for that uh, for that introduction or thank you for now some scientists are indicating we should make plans to adapt to a four degree hotter world business as usual means about four degrees warmer which is approximately one ice age in the opposite direction. Based on today's temperatures we are going to hit two meters of sea level rise no matter what. We are in a race against time. It takes a double whammy to understand. It takes repeated shocks. We need a global movement that demands real change. We don't have time to speculate. We don't have time is absolutely correct. As we know, we don't have time. There's no more time. Yes, we don't have time. We use the hashtag. We don't have time. We don't have much time. We don't have time to wait.